couple people that really inspires me, aside from like Lauren, um, is um, Colby Jackson. Um, he's does a lot of photography up in LA, and I would love to film a video with him. Could I get that possibly in 2019? Maybe. I'm shooting for the stars here. Everybody, this is Colby Jackson at Apple He's just going to talk about literally himself, um, how he empowers himself, everything that he's doing. He's a huge inspiration to me, and I know he'll be an awesome and great inspiration for all of you. First off, guys, my name is Coley Jackson. I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Los Angeles, California, born and raised. Um, so don't get me wrong, being from LA has definitely had an upper hand, like an upper hand in a lot of things. But it hasn't been easy, and it's definitely been a journey. And so for me, like growing up was really crazy. I don't come from an entertainment background family. Like my mom works in retail, and my dad is an IT computer guy. I just kind of like found it on my own but ever since I was a kid like my mom would put out the pots and pans and would allow me to like bang on the pots and like make sounds and um, we would like paint together in the backyard and like my mom really encouraged me growing up to enjoy and be creative and, and be able to do whatever I wanted to do in life and so I think that's really helped me to establish who I am today and kind of plays a, a major role in my life. But like without getting like weirdly super depressing because I, I hate that and I tend to avoid my emotions. Um, but I like didn't have the best upbringing like in schools. Like I was severely bullied. Like I went through a phase where like it felt like the world was against me and everybody hated me. And um, I had to really fight to survive. Like my grades fell under. Like I almost didn't graduate high school because of just everything that was happening. Like I wasn't focusing on math, I wasn't focusing on history, like my classes, I was focusing on how can I get from one class to the next class without just getting beat up or like having someone like spit on me or like ridiculous things because like I am a part of the LGBT community and like it has been difficult like coming from a very small town. Um, but it's weird, like LA everyone likes to tell you is just this like big open place where everyone can be themselves. But that's like in the heart of LA, like on the outskirts of LA in these little small cities it's not like that. It's it's very much Midwest like. It's very it's very religious people who think very one kind of like minded. And like the city I grew up in was a city where like people are born, bred, like they will die there. Like they go to college there, they get jobs there, they die, they don't leave. Like that's not for me. I graduated high school finally and like two days later packed everything up and moved to Hollywood. <laughs> the quickest I could get out of there, I got out of there. Like it was not for me, not my go-to, not my favorite thing. Um, but then I went to film school and I decided, I was like, hey, I'm going to get my degree in filmmaking. And when I first went into film school, I wanted to be an editor. And I was like, I'm going to edit movies. Life is going to be great. Because also one of the other reasons why I didn't graduate, like almost didn't graduate high school was because instead of doing homework, I was watching YouTube videos and like right. <laughs> I was learning how I could make films and how I could do green screen and how I could edit and how I could do anything. So I clearly wasn't doing anything that I was supposed to do. <laughs> Um, but then I finally went to college and like I went to film school and I went to um, the Los Angeles Film School which is in the top 25 in the entire US which is amazing but also the biggest waste of your money so please don't go there oh, okay. um, <laughs> I'm just gonna blatantly drag them and I don't care um, <laughs> so it was just a big waste of my money because there was at one point I'm paying $80,000 for tuition and were watching Film Riot videos. Videos that I watched when I was in high school, in middle school, and I was like, I'm not paying $80,000 to watch a YouTube video I could watch at home. Um, but then I went to college, I did film, I got my associate's degree, and then I was halfway through my bachelor's degree, and I decided to drop out. I was like, this isn't for me anymore. I lost sight of what I wanted to do, um, and it was really interesting. A lot of my teachers would just tell me like, hey, uh, why are you here? Like, just go work. Like, this is a waste of your money. And so, like, my teacher supported me, and like, everyone supported me. So, like, I knew where I was was where I needed to be. I just didn't know where I needed to be. There was a, a good point in time, like, after I dropped out of college, where I just kind of sat there, like, well, now what? I was very uninspired. Like, I didn't know anything of what I wanted to do, where I wanted to be. I ended up falling in love with YouTube. And, like, YouTube has always been my fallback. And so I started working in social media, and I became an editor for YouTubers. 
And so I was editing for like Lance 210 and Curtis Lepore and Team 10. And we were doing all of the Instagram skits and viral content and YouTube videos. And so like that's where like me and the YouTube realm started like kind of building and building and building. And it wasn't until my friend Emmanuel, um, he was like, hey, let's go out and do a photo shoot. And I was like, I've only done film. I've only done editing. I've never picked up a camera before in my life to just like take a photo. And he was like, hey, let's go do the shoot. So I was like, all right, cool. So like me and Emmanuel and then our friend Tajay went out to do this shoot in Hollywood. And I remember we took these photos and we went back to uh, like our friend's house and edited the photos. And we thought we were the best editors that <laughs> God could have given. We were looking back at these photos and looking at our edits being like, this is it, fam. Like we made it. This is beauty. Everyone is shook. I look back at these photos and they are the worst photos no. I've ever taken. They're so bad. Like they're so bad. But I just remember that initial thing of us sitting there and going, this is so stunning. And this is so surreal and beautiful. And remembering like the reason why I love photography so much is the fact that you can capture a moment that will forever be forgotten. And like in that split second of when everything goes down you put you know you're pressing the buttons you're getting all your settings right you're looking at the model a slight wind picks up her hair is perfect and you capture it and it looks beautiful and you look at it and you go wow like for that split second you looked like this the feeling is there the vibe is there and like i just remember looking back at that and being like i fell in love again i was inspired again and then right after that it just felt like photography became my thing like all of my beginning photos are the worst things. Like we can throw them in the trash and forget they ever existed. But like the secret is, and like here's something that I don't ever tell people, but like let's expose myself. Um, I didn't edit my first set of photos. Like I sent them all to a manual because I didn't know how to edit. I didn't understand Lightroom. I didn't understand Photoshop. Like I'd go and shoot with models and then send him my photos and he would edit them and I would send them back as if they were my own edits because I didn't know. And so while he was editing, because like he was the photographer of our group, I was learning Lightroom. I was going through and trying to understand every button and everything that worked and went down. And I was downloading free presets off of Google and like stealing other people's work basically and then calling it my own until I finally was able to figure out like, oh, this button does this, this does this. I can shoot a photo this way and it will look like that versus like, any other thing and so it took a long time for me basically to figure that out but then once I got there like I created a style I created my work like you'll be surprised if there's ever like an influencer that I take photos with and they post my photos and for some reason don't tag me my DMs will fill with is this your photo right this looks like something you would shoot oh this looks like your style oh this is so it's really interesting how like I've been able to build a fan base that can recognize my work and look at something and go, oh, this is Outcast Cities. And I've only been doing this now for like a year and a half, almost two years. And like, this is all so new to me. The whole photo thing is so new to me, but it's every, like it's everything. Like I get up every single day and feel so inspired. Like, what am I going to shoot today? And like, I will never leave anywhere without my camera. And it's like attached to my hip always. This whole creative world is my outlet of expression and finally being able to be heard and like fight for like my art and myself and like everything by just pictures. It's a mindset. Like I, I really genuinely believe if you want something, you'll go above and beyond to reach it. If it's something that really truly inspires you, nothing will stand in your way. You won't allow yourself barriers. You won't make excuses. My love for photography comes from the fact that I love capturing moments. I love capturing emotions and feelings into a photo. What inspires me and like what gets me up every day is, is I get that same butterfly feeling in my stomach when I go to shoot. I get that same amount of re-inspiration when I go, oh, that that's a good idea. Oh, maybe turn this way, boom, it's perfect. And the moment you see it, you get this like re-energy, like re-energized feeling in your heart and like your soul. Trust me, I wake up and I instantly hate the world. I'm not a morning <laughs> person. Don't talk to me. Like I'm that person. But you know what's so funny is the moment that my brain is working again and I'm like fully functioning, I'm I'm ready to go. It's work time, I'm running, like 
I just wake up and tell myself I have one life to live. I have one day. This is what can I accomplish in the 24 hours that I'm up. I just need to work as hard as I possibly can and make as many crazy things as I possibly can. And like, this is, this is it. Like, this is everything that I've ever wanted and I have to fight for because it's hard to explain. Like, I have to explain to my mom every day why I dropped out of college. I have to explain to like the world every day why I don't have a real job. And everyone tells me that all the time, like when I went and I said, hey, I'm gonna go to film school. Why don't you go to a real college? Why don't you go get a real job? And it's like, ha ha ha, I can't work a nine to five, I'll shoot myself. Like, <laughs> that's just not for me. And so it's like, okay, like congrats to everybody who can do that. And thank you for making the world go round. But I need a paintbrush. I need a camera. I need a subject I need to create. I will take my pain and make some of my best art pieces and it's like that's how I sit there and I go how am I feeling and how can I express and it's the same with musicians it's the same with everybody like if you are an artist like you do it because it's the only way that you can let out how you feel on the inside I think there are art pieces that inspire me when I scroll through Instagram or like explore feeds or anything like I'll find certain pieces that make me go holy smokes and like my favorite thing to do is try my best to copy something because when I copy something, I can then put my own twist on it or I can then get in that mindset of thinking, oh, this would look cool. So like, I could show you probably like a perfect example real quick. Yeah. It's, so my newest photo with Lauren is this photo of her in this red silk Coca-Cola thing with a red silk background, right? right. And so when I was scrolling through Instagram on the Explore feed, one of one of my favorite photographers, I guess you could say, like I do have a few, his name is Derek Fresky. Mm -hmm. um, he posted this photo of himself in an orange jumpsuit with an orange background and tape. Cool, yeah, that's so cool. And so for me, when I created that piece of Lauren, yes, they're very similar, and yes, you could technically say that it's stealing, but I had to put myself in a mindset of thinking, how can I make the background not just regular red? I could match the fabric to her. I could, like, it makes me think. And then when I start creating those little tiny pieces, and everybody has to start somewhere. You just do. When I start creating those pieces like that, that'll inspire me to make other types of work where, like, okay, maybe it's not that, but it's this. Like, it's a Polaroid on top of another photo with, like, weird red. Like, yeah. it just makes you start to think in ways that are different and outside the box. And it's not just you uploading a photo or editing the colors you want. Because you can take a photo and make it look nice, but then you can take a next step and put it into Photoshop and do all the craziness to it, right? right. But there's, a, there's a quote somewhere, and I really am going to butcher because I don't remember what it is, but it's like, good artists create but great artists steal and it's something like that and like to me I really do stand by that I really do believe that I really think that it's okay to copy people and it's okay to because as long as you made it it's still your photo it is your idea it's your art but every idea has to stem somewhere like even like musicians and artists no rap is ever original everything has already been written and now at this point it's how can you take everything that's been written and make it your own you can hate on me all you want, but if I can put a piece of art in front of you and you're gonna tell me, oh, screw you because it's this person's art, and I go, hey, thank you so much for comparing me to this, but unfortunately, I put my blood, sweat, and tears, this is my photo, my art, my edits, my everything, and they go, oh, well, I like it. Like, I was able to flip it, and now they're a fan. Like, so, I do like hate. I do love criticism. I really love people who try to test me because it makes me think differently. It makes me have to go, oh wait, is this wrong? Is Did I push the boundary too far or did I not push it far enough? I have an issue with authority. <laughs> I have an issue with people, and I've always been like this. Like as a kid, you know what? And this is gonna sound so weird, but I remember the moment exactly. I was in a McDonald's, <laughs> and I, hear me out though, I was in a McDonald's, I ordered something and they messed it up, and my mom was like, just go back up and ask politely, so little, like, I was like six, maybe seven, I remember I walked back up to this lady, and I looked at her and I was like, hey, this is incorrect, blah, 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 like, can we get it fixed, I was super nice, everything, she said something along the lines of like, 
you're just a kid, why should I help you? Like, she literally, I don't know, like she like was having a bad day or something, yeah. but just the words like, you're a kid, why should I help you? Like, oh, maybe when you're older, maybe like that. I remember that my mom literally like screamed at this lady. Like, you know, those like public freak out moments. She would have been in one of those compilations. Right. <laughs> my mom walks up to this woman, screams at her. That woman gets fired right then on the spot by her manager. Like I was like, don't ever play me, girl. Like I'm taking your job. <laughs> but it was in those moments where I remember thinking like, I don't want anyone to look at me because of my age and tell me I can't do something. Right. And tell me that like, you can't do it because you're a kid. You're too young, you don't understand. You can't comprehend, you can't create, you can't do that. Ever since then, it was always like a, oh, I acted more mature. I started doing things differently. I had my own mind. I was very standoffish. If anyone, if you were a figure of authority, you and I did not get along because I didn't respect adults who would tell me no because not because they were telling you no but because of like no you can't do this because i'm an adult or like when you're in an argument with your mom and she goes well i'm your mother so you have to like respect that uh, -uh. <laughs> we're now arguing more yeah. i don't care who you are like i'm not saying go argue with authority please respect your elders but <laughs> i am saying is don't allow your age to tell you differently don't allow anyone to set you back oh even if it's as simple as your sexuality, don't ever allow that to define you. Don't ever allow your age to define you. You get to define yourself. You get to label yourself and you get to say who you want to be. I'm not going to go to a real college. I'm not going to go get a real job because joke's on you. You and your real job, I can make in a day. I can make what you make in a week in a day. So fuck your real job. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it was the same thing of like, congrats, you went to Yale. Congrats, you went to Harvard. Yeah. Who the fuck cares? At the end of the day, you are going to compete against people who have gone to a million different schools, who have gone to uh, um, any other lengths. Like maybe they're friends with the person who runs the company. And just because you went to Yale, you're not going to get that job. Mm. Like, I don't believe college defines you. I don't believe that college can dictate your worth. And that's what people use it as and they will hold it against you. Oh, you're going to a junior college. Oh, you're going to community college. Well, I went to a university. I don't give a fuck. Like, I just don't care. Because the fact is, is I'm gonna get the same education if I go out and want to get the same education. Right. For people who are getting told, go to a real college, go get a real job, go do, if anyone ever tells you what to do, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. No means no. And that is whether it's with your body, if you want tattoos, if you want any, like if you don't want something, you don't have to do it because it's your life. It's not your parents' life. It's not your friend's life. It's your life. You have one life to live. And if you aren't making your own decisions, then it's not worth it. I'll tell you, I have a mental breakdown at least once a month where I say, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is photography what I'm supposed to be doing? Is being on social media what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to do this? You know, the amount of times that I want to give up and the amount of times I want to walk away, is it's often, it's a lot. Um, but it's so crazy that I'll get, I'll get messages all the time from people who just say like, you're the reason like I'm living or you're the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. And um, my dad just bought me my first camera because of you. And like the first fan that I ever met in real life, I was at a Sammy's camera and I was getting my camera fixed. My sensor was off on it. So I took it in and I was just dropping it off. And I felt this little kid, like this little kid was staring at me and I was like, okay, like, hi, like maybe it's just, I don't know, little kids are weird. So I was like checking out and everything and his dad tapped me on the shoulder. I turn around and was like, hey, are you Outcast City? I was like, yeah, like my real name's Colby, like nice to meet you, can I help you? And he's like, my son is a really big fan and the reason why we're here is to buy him his first camera. And I was just so blown away by that. And I was like, whoa, like one, shout out to your dad because that is a big investment. Right. But two, like I inspired someone so deeply that he wanted a camera and that he wanted to do what I did and be in that realm. And I think back to that moment a lot because it's just like how I, I it like, I still don't understand it and I still don't grasp it. And I like, it's not real to me that almost 30,000 people look up to me or that 30,000 people are like, Oh my gosh, outcast city. Because like, I don't see it every day. Like I don't have to see all my followers. I don't see all my fans. I don't look at, you know, 
But I think back to that moment whenever I want to give up of just like that, I was able to inspire that one kid. And I have people who change their college majors. I have people who finally come out to their parents because of how I like just live this, it's my life kind of life. And it, it, it inspires me. Like I, when I inspire the people and the people inspire me back, that is a good relationship. Because like, I'll never be an artist that's like, I'm never gonna teach you, I'm never gonna show you what I do. Like, I want better art in the world. I want people to be able to learn it and move on it and create. And so like, if I inspire you and you're super passionate about like clothing or you're super passionate about your horses and you're messaging me being like, oh my gosh, I just got a new horse, blah, blah, blah. I may not know nothing about horses, but let me tell you, the amount of passion that you're giving me is inspiring me to be like, oh my gosh, photography. To get like real serious for like two seconds, it's like, I still don't grasp that I'm good. I still don't grasp that I've made it as far as I have. And when I was on tour, our drummer Ryan, um, I stayed in the same hotel room as him. And there was one night that one of my favorite YouTubers ever followed me and liked one of my photos. And I was freaking out, just being like, oh my gosh, like I can't believe this because ever since I was in middle school, the only coping mechanism I had was YouTube. And so it was like, these are the people that I would watch so I didn't blow my brains out. And like, to get the recognition from them being like, I like your work, I think you're worth it. I don't ever understand that yet because it's like, I still see myself as that middle schooler. I still see myself as damaged. I still see myself as that person and it's hard to grow out of. But he was telling me, he was like, I don't understand why you're freaking out because your work is that good. Your work is at their level. Your work is at a place where you compete with them, your competition now. And that still blows my mind because I'm just doing this for fun. I'm literally just dicking around. Like I am just taking a photo because it's fun and it's my little way of playing instead of video games. And like, it's weird when people that I look up to and I respect finally respect me in the same way. Um, because of it and like that's what inspires me like that's what keeps me going is those moments my biggest challenge is not getting burnt out because i there was a certain point where i felt like i took the same photo every day and everybody thinks they're original they're like hey i'm gonna walk and not look at the camera and you're gonna take a photo of me looking away and that's what everybody wants everybody wants these fake paparazzi shots and that's not me and like my biggest struggle is finding time to make art that I want to make because you have to sell yourself a little bit to financially stay stable and do photo shoots that you don't want to do but you have to make time for yourself you have to make time for the art that you love and go out and get it and make no excuse that's the biggest struggle is staying true to yourself understanding what it is that you went in for originally. Um, Cause trust me, there have been times where I've made more money than I've ever known what to do with. And there have been times where I'm so broke that I have 70 cents in my bank account. When I'm at my richest point, I'm the first time, the first time I was ever making a shitload of money, I lost myself. I wore iced out chains, Timberlands, sunglasses everywhere. Like, don't talk to me if I don't know you. If you don't have, 500 or like 600,000 followers, you're relevant. Don't hit my line. I don't want to waste my time. And I was really an asshole. I really lost myself in the LA scene. And um, it wasn't until I lost it all, I lost all my money, I was basically like homeless, that I went, I have no real friends. I have nothing to show what I've done. I'm not inspired. I'm worthless. Like, that's probably the lowest I've ever been was when I first lost it all because it was just, I realized that person that I built myself up to wasn't who I wanted to be. And like, you have to, that's the biggest struggle for me is staying true, staying yourself and not letting other people push you in any way. And I've gotten really good at it recently where I can be me and wholeheartedly me. And I really do owe a lot of it to Lauren Sanderson. And it's like, she's been one of my friends for a good chunk of time, but like, she inspires me every day and like she even said to me one time she was like i look at your work ethic and i feel like i'm not doing enough and i'm like what the fuck? <laughs> like, i look at but like i look at her and i think that i'm like oh my god i'm not doing enough lauren's doing eight million things and so like we like have this weird like 
we're like we feel like we're competing with each other to like be better but like we both look at each other like one of us is doing something better yeah. so it's like really it's like really weird but like she's really kept me grounded and kept me as a wholehearted person and she we just I send her ideas she sends me ideas I call her at like three in the morning being like I have a disposable camera let's go shoot and we'll do it because it's just like like my literally my trunk of my car has like eight thousand different like disposable camera like just packages <laughs> that I've just taken out because me and her just run around and just do dumb shit and like she really does inspire me to stay true to myself and and I think we both kind of like whenever someone starts to like get a little too out the element <laughs> we'll like we'll like knock them back into place and so like we're we have a really good back and forth relationship of just calling each other out for things let me tell you the biggest thing and this is my like this it is so important to have real friends i'm not talking a group of 14 i'm not talking a large group like two or three people that will be honest with you that will support you in everything that you do will help you when you fall will be there when you're at your highs like if you can't support me at my lows i don't want you near me at my highs and it's really important to me. And so, like, I have, like, my best friend group is, like, very small. My circle is very limited. But, like, they will always, we will always catch each other. If I'm asleep and one of them calls me and they're in a wreck four hours away, well, guess what? I'm driving four hours. It's so important in Los Angeles and anywhere to have a family and people that you will do anything for because they'll do it back. When I first got to LA, I took some of those people for granted. And I really, like, if I could apologize every single day, like I would. Like one of my best friends when I first got to LA, her name was Christina Sunderberg. And she is the best actress, model, friend, life partner, DIYer <laughs> I've ever known. But I really did take her for granted. I really did not appreciate everything she was doing for me. And we've since separated. And it's like, if I could call her every single day now and just be like, yo, like I really messed up. Like I would, but like at a certain time, like you have to just like respect they're doing their own life and I'm doing my own life. And I've, I've learned from my past mistakes. I like being stared at. I like being obnoxious. I like saying, that I like the finer things in life. What inspires me to be myself is that I don't wanna be like everybody else. I don't wanna wear the same black ripped skinny jeans. I don't wanna fit in. I wanna wear diamond studded orange overalls. I want to have all of my backpacks be a million different colors. <laughs> I, want, I want the world. I want it all and I want it because I want it. Uh, what inspires me to be me is that I can't be a cookie cutter. I can't allow myself to sit back and just be an ad. I'm not a walking billboard. I continue to be myself and I'm gonna continue to inspire because nobody was there for me. Nobody was there to tell me, hey, go, it's okay to be yourself. It's okay to do what you love. It's okay to go out and get what you want. I'm gonna be that voice for the voiceless because I didn't have that person. I was shoved down so much in my life. I was forced to wear the clothes that were bought for me. I was forced to just blend in and go with the flow and go to a private school and wear a uniform and get a real job. And like, finally like I broke and I was like, this is my life. I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I wanna do and I'm gonna do it how I wanna do it, when I wanna do it. And I am not gonna let anyone take that away from me again, because like, I, I'm gonna be remembered. I'm gonna make history. I'm gonna do everything that I've ever set out to do and written down. Like, no one is ever gonna tell me differently and no one is ever gonna be able to sit there and say, hey, you're doing it wrong. Because it's my way. I can do it however I want to do it. Like I'm on the right path. It might take me a little longer to get there because I'm choosing which direction I want to go, but it's my path and it's my history. It's nobody else's. And like, that's the biggest thing that I always want to tell people is like, go do 
what you want to do. It's your life. You have one life to live. You get to choose the words you say. If you want to have a sailor's mouth, curse as much as you want. It's your life. But the reason why I'm called Outcast City and like where Outcast City come from is like, I wanted people a place that they could call home. I wanted people to feel safe. And like, what's really funny is, I remember I was sitting in film school and this, this kid that I used to sit next to ran this whole clothing company. And he, I was asking him, I was like, how did you come up with your clothing company name? And it was called 33rd and 33. So I was like, okay, well, where did you come up with this? He was like, oh, that's my zip code. It's where I grew up, it's my home. And I like remember like my mom used to move a lot. And so like I never really had a city that I called home. I never really had an area code. I never felt safe. I never felt secure. I never had that. So when I was sitting there thinking like, what could I call myself? Like, I feel alone. Like I feel like an outcast. I feel like I'm by myself. And so I was like, well, where does a group of outcasts get together? And like, that's where Outcast City was. Like, I'm the mayor of this city. I'm, I'm, I run this place where people who don't have a home and don't have a family, don't have friends, don't have anyone to support them. Like, I'll be there to support you. I'll be there to say, hey, your shit's great. Keep popping off, sis. Like, that's me. Like, that is what Outcast City was made for. It's designed for. It's to let people come out. It's to let people say, hey, I'm gay and I'm proud. It allows people to say, hey, you know what? I don't want to be a business major. I'm a dancer. I'm a, I love ballet. Like it, it allows people to do what they want to do and empower each other to say, yes, you can. And I'm here to support you all the way. But here's, here's the thing that I'm going to say to you. And this is like, I don't want you to ever stop or feel like you're letting yourself down or anyone down. Because at the end of the day, if you want to make a YouTube video, it's for yourself. It is for, yes, maybe you want to make it so that other people can feel empowered, but what are you really doing it for? You're doing it so that you can feel good. You can feel like you're helping. You can feel like you're making an impact. It has nothing to do with everybody else. So like, no one can ever tell you it's wrong. Nobody can ever tell you, like, why are you wasting your time? What is this YouTube thing? Because you're doing it for you, it's not them. Like, I create photos for myself. I do it and I try to inspire other people because that's what I feel like I was put on this earth for. And that that's what I do it for, it's like, Hey guys, wake up every single day, go do something creative and make the day the best day it can be. And like things like that is just like, I feel good about myself. Like I feel like I'm like, wow, like if I can inspire one person a day then I'm doing my thing. If I can make one person smile at the end of the day, that's all I care about. If I can change one person's life, like that's it. It's the same shit every single day, just a different day. And honestly, to backtrack, like that's what gets me out of bed every day. That's what gets me to get up and create is like, wow, I just want to inspire other people. I just want other people to get, like, finally look their boss in the face and say, fuck you, like, I'm out. Like, I don't want to work a nine to five. <laughs> Tell their mom, like, hey, like, I want to be a painter. Like, that's all that I could ever care about. And I get DMs like that all the time. Hey, I finally quit my job because of you. I'm so happy. Yada, yada, yada. Like, fuck yeah. You are beautiful. You, every single one of you are beautiful. You, you get, like, you get to let the world see you how you want to be seen. If you don't like your hair, cut your hair. Change your hair color. You don't like your clothes, get new clothes. If you can't afford new clothes, like, cut your clothes that you already have and make them sick. Like, I think if there's a will, there's a way. And so, like, my best thing that I could say to aspiring creatives and things and my best piece of advice is never give up push the boundaries, step outside the box, do it because you love it, let it inspire, let it grow, let it fuel you, let it be you, eat, sleep, and breathe it. Like, if you, this is something you wanna do, you'll make it whether you think you will or not. Like, you have got to take that leap. You have got to respect yourself and respect your art and don't let anyone tell you differently. Like, if you, if I could go back and tell 12 year old me, everything is gonna be okay, just keep doing you, I would. Like, there have been so many nights that I wouldn't have cried myself to sleep. There would've been so many, like I wouldn't be the person that I am. Like, here's the thing that's crazy though, like, <laughs> life might seem like it is so shitty and that things happen for no reason, but I promise you, 
the shittiest of situations build you into a stronger person and one day you are going to thank your bully and it sounds so weird but if I could go and look my bullies in the face and say thank you because you got me the thick skin I needed for the entertainment industry thank you like you built me into this person that is able to wake up every day and say thank you world I'm still here I didn't kill myself I'm still here your life might be at its lowest moments. Create from it, fuel from it, build from it. Literally never give up. Always do things outside the box and do it because it makes you happy. So stop being insecure. I promise you, everybody who's watching this, like if you want it, go get it. You're just as beautiful. Like you can't, you've got to get out of your own head because I promise you, everybody is so focused on their own flaws, they're not looking at yours. No, let me guys, please. Um, Subscribe to this channel, hit it with a like, leave a comment down below. Let her know what other videos of people that you want her to interview. Um, but thank you so much for having me on your channel. It means a lot. And guys, if you want to follow me, I'm on Instagram at Outcast City. And then everything else you can kind of find from there. Yep, and I'll put all of this information in the description box below. It'll all be there. And I literally talk about it probably all the time on my Twitter and my Instagram. So you'll see it up there. No doubt about it. Thank you again. I really hope you have a great night. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. This did wonders for me and for so many other people out there. So thank you. Perfect. All right.